Hi there friends, today I want to talk about an important topic and that is what kind of summary papers can you write given certain situations and this is what this video is about. Well, first a couple of remarks. The writing of the summary of synthesis papers is important and you should recognize as you will see by the end of this video that there is almost always a very good opportunity to write these papers irrespective of how much is already known about this, how new the field is, what your career stage is, and how many review papers there are already written on this topic, to some extent anyway. And the reason this is so important is that there is an ever-increasing flood of information. There are more and more papers produced all the time on any given topic, and so therefore the summary papers that synthesize information and make sense of all the flood of information, I mean, it's clear why they are becoming more and more important and why they're also really valuable to a lot of people, from people that start in a certain field to established researchers that want to just learn about something and not read a hundred papers, and also to policymakers and people that um, apply this knowledge. What's also important to realize, and I stumble across this hurdle basically in people's minds all the time is like you can write such a synthesis paper or a review paper um, a summary paper if you will even if you're an early career researcher you don't need to be somebody who is a senior researcher with decades of experience now for sure it may be easier for somebody who has already thought about a topic for decades basically to write and produce such a paper because they can use the experience they've you know gathered over the years but that doesn't mean that you couldn't have also a, uni a unique insight in, in the reading of the literature and add your voice and you can so explicitly if you're an early career researcher for example if you're a PhD student you can be writing one of these papers, for example, as part of your PhD thesis, if this is allowed in your program. So I'm gonna cover five different situations in terms of how much information is published and how much literature synthesis has already happened. And the first situation is, incidentally, one of my favorite ones. It's a new field There is barely anything published on this field. There are certainly no synthesis papers available. And so you might think, well, what I'm going to write about, what I'm going to synthesize, if there's nothing to synthesize because there's hardly any papers or no papers published on a certain field. Well, you can. You can write a perspective viewpoint opinion paper. I have made another video for that. I'm going to link in the description. But basically, these papers serve the purpose of saying, well, look at this. There's an important gap. We should be really working on this. And this is important. And of course, you can still provide a synthesis and an analysis in this paper. This is not an opinion in, in, the, in the sense of you having an opinion and talking to somebody in a bar or a restaurant. This is a, a scientifically well-reasoned, well-argued product. For example, where you transfer information from comparable fields or situations or topics or theories and you make them applicable to the topic at hand. So even when there is basically very little known or even nothing known about a field, you can provide value by pointing out why this particular question should be worked on, is important, and provide a well-reasoned product for that. The second situation is maybe the one that's the classical situation in everybody's mind, is that there is quite a lot of information out there, not endless, but you know, maybe dozens of papers, let's say, on a certain topic, but no review exists. Well, this is the classical situation. Go ahead, write a review paper. Write, for example, a narrative review paper. Or, if there is sufficient amount of data available, and if you have the skills to do it, because this is really not about writing, this is about statistical anal analysis, um, conduct a meta-analysis and write a systematic review based on that meta-analysis. And I think the topic of meta-analysis I'll cover in a separate video. Now the third situation is there is already a really solid amount of data available. Definitely now dozens of papers have been published on this. Maybe there's also already some narrative review papers. So therefore that niche basically has already been filled. Well then what you can still do is 
You can do a systematic review where you do really incorporate a meta-analysis because that meta-analysis, I mean that additional statistical analysis of the data provides a lot of value added compared to a narrative review because it is quantitative. Or um, this becomes borderline sort of interesting for maybe doing a systematic mapping. So basically finding what has already been done. Now this leads us to point four. There is literally tons of data out there, maybe even hundreds of papers. And there's already many narrative reviews and potentially even also meta-analyses. Well, then you would say, no point in thinking about a synthesis paper. But I think you can still write very useful synthesis papers even then, and people do. And what you can do is when you are providing an overview over a very broad field or when there is tons of data basically applicable, you can do a systematic mapping exercise, which is you look, you query basically all your papers that meet your search criteria and you order them according to certain principles. So you can basically provide a landscape of the research that has been done, what has already been worked on also with what intensity and how many papers have been published with what ecosystem type and what method and so on and so forth. So this is more like a broad stroke overview of what has already been achieved. And what you can also do, you can write a review of reviews. These are highly valuable because you pull together reviewed information from a variety of different reviews. And you can basically do the same when there's already a ton of meta-analyses, you know, maybe there is already a hundred meta-analyses in this broader area. This is obviously most likely not going to be in a very narrow area, but a broader area. And then you can do what's called a second order meta-analysis. So you can basically pull in all the meta-analyzed data from these other analyses and make a um, new meta-analysis based on these data. So even when there is well, when your scope of the literature that you're looking at is extremely broad, it's basically impossible to provide a narrative review. You can still do all these things to provide value. And the value here really clearly is to provide a broad stroke overview of what has been done and maybe also what has been found, but sometimes only what has been done. And one, another, one other aspect that comes into play here with this very large number of studies to potentially process is a bibliometric analysis. So you can basically look at citation patterns, you can look at who cites whom, um, are there differences among countries and among regions, and what are central papers and um, things like that. And so you can also do an, a whole nother analysis based on that. Well, the fifth situation, which is the one where I'll probably hesitate to write a summary paper in most cases, is when there is already a lot of review papers, really, and comparatively little primary literature, so real data paper. So when it seems like there is an imbalance in everybody's writing review papers, and then there's actually relatively few data papers. Well, in this case, it seems like, well, you should probably contribute to the progress in this field by producing data rather than summarizing data because it clearly seems to be limited by data. But you could even write a little note or a comment um, or an opinion paper where you say we really should focus on you know, providing primary um, data on this particular point because we don't have any or we have too little and this is such an important area because of such and such. But I think this is something I would, I would hesitate to do um, because the, the value is maybe not as clear as in the other situations. So this may be the only situation when there's really this imbalance between a lot of review papers available and very little primary literature where I would not advise to write a summary paper outright. But so as you can see, there's almost always in all situations and irrespective of the setting as we've gone through, a good reason for, for writing a summary or review paper and for synthesizing the literature and for providing additional value to other researchers. So I think this is great news for people because there is always basically something to write. This is especially good news, I think, for early career researchers who tend to often not embrace these opportunities. And um, well, this is all I have to say. And I would love to hear from you. What are your experiences with 
writing such summary and synthesis papers, why you would recommend them. And until then, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.